Have you ever thought of that there are a large number of pollen grains across the different species and they are falling on the stigma, but only a very specific pollen grains germinate? Not only that, even within a species, the plant rejects the pollen grain of its own species. Surprised? This is what actually we call as a sexual incompatibility. This is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your mentor, and in today's sessions, we will be talking about sexual incompatibility, right? So as I told you that in nature, the stigma receives large number of pollen of different types, but it is fertilized by only specific pollen grains. Okay, so that means pistil is equipped enough to accept the pollen grains of its choice. And how it happens? It happens by our reactions between the protein of pistil and the protein of the pollen grains. This is what we call protein-protein interactions. Okay, so there are two types of sexual incompatibility what we can say one what we call interspecies second what we call intraspecies okay now in case of interspecies what will happen that uh, that is going to occur between individuals of different species and in case of intraspecies what happens that is going to occur between the species of the same or what we can do different varieties so this particular thing is to ensure across pollinations okay so interspecific incompatibility is mostly exercised through protein-protein interaction just right now I told you. So we will mainly focus on this one what we call intraspecific incompatibility. Right? Now you see again there can be two possible types of intraspecies incompatibility. One what we call heteromorphic, second what we call homomorphic. Now what is heteromorphic? In case of heteromorphic what happens? That a difference is going to occur in terms of some morphological structure. For instance, take an example of heterostyle. In case of heterostyle, what happens? There is a different length of style, so thereby it ensures the cross pollination. Uh, we have also discussed in the chapter of pollination itself. Uh, uh, primula is uh, one of the example in which we see uh, this the intra species uh, incompatibility, or that is heteromorphic incompatibility. In case of homo homomorphic, what happens? It is characterized the presence of same morphological mating type, right? And again, it is also divided into two, two types, what we call uh, gametophytic self-incompatibility and sporophytic self-incompatibility. Actually, it is controlled by two genes, right? And genes, let it be say S and this S is going to have many alleles or we can say it is controlled by the multiple alleles, right? So one by one, we will discuss about these two types of incompatibility that is gametophytic self-incompatibility and sporophytic self-incompatibility, okay? Have a look, first of all, gam gametophytic self-incompatibility. First of all, it is the most common type. Here what happens? It is determined by the genotype of male gametophyte. Okay, have a look at this uh, diagram. So here S1, S2, S3, S4, these are the different alleles of a gene S. Okay, so suppose the genotype of pistil is S1, S2, right? So here the S1 or S2 will not germinate. So thereby it will ensure a cross pollination. Okay, so you can see there in in case of S1, S2, what happens? It, it, it fails to germinate, right? But in, in case of S1, S3, if you see, this is suppose this is a case of S1, S3, what happens? Here S2 will germinate because the pistil genotype is S1, S3. So that's why S2 will definitely it will germinate. Okay. Similarly, if you take an example of S3, S4, right, here S1, S2 both can germinate, right, because it is, as I told you, this is going to be determined by the genotype of the male gametophyte. And since the source is different, so that's why it, 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 it is always going to germinate, okay. So it's very clear that uh, incompatibility or gametophytic self-incompatibility is controlled by S allele in the haploid pollen grain. Now let's talk about the next what we call sporophytic self incompatibility. Okay. Now what happens 
it is controlled by the genotype of the sporophytic tissue right from which actually pollen is divided okay just take an example for instance the genotype of pistol let it be say s1 and s2 so naturally here here s1 s2 will not germinate that is a very common thing but suppose this is s1 s3 okay even in this case the s2 will not germinate why because this s1 s2 is developing form the sporophytic tissue and a sporophytic tissue is going to carry the both allele s1 and s2 so they belong to one stream okay so that's why even if s1 s3 is there the s2 will not be able to generate since it belongs to the same string okay so the sporophytic tissue whatever it is going to produce the allele of the same will never allow to germinate the pollen of the same allele even if the physical presence of that allele is not there so it entirely depends upon the source of the sporophyte okay this is what we call sporophytic self incompatibility right i hope this uh, concept is absolutely clear okay so once again i would like to say that uh, s2 pollen in this particular case which was produced by s1 and s2 they cannot germinate s1 and s3 because there was a part of s1 s2 so this is what we call sporophytic self incompatibility right that's all as far as this entire uh, section of self incompatibility is concerned i hope the concept is pretty clear at your end don't forget to like and subscribe this channel thank you